everybody, it's Michael Swaim. Welcome to Frame Rate, where we rate at the frame. <laughs> there, that yes. was kind of, I said I'd do the straight intro, but you know, I yes. zhuzhed it up. You zhuzhed it up. I'm so, I'm, I'm psyched now. I'm that's, like, say, that was awesome. Yeah, that's my learned colleague, Abe Epperson, also <laughs> known as Dr. Movies, here to take the pulse of 1997's The Fifth Element. Mm. Can you turn your head to the left and cough, Fifth Element? God, I would Ooh, love to cup the Fifth Element's balls. That, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Just as a that thank doesn't you. Look. Doesn't sound good. Doesn't look good. Spe- let's meet someone who sounds and looks good. Our very special hey. guest today, Vanessa Guerrero. Welcome. Hi, it's me. Yeah, welcome back, returning champion. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thrilled um, to be back. Yeah, I'm going to steal something from Gamefully Unemployed and ask if you've got plugs at the top. When people you are more what? engaged. This is the first time in my life in which I have nothing personal to plug, but only professional. Okay. Hey. Uh, every Monday, a new upload of 10 Minute Power Hour is uploaded. I am the showrunner for that show. You should yeah. watch it. I need you to in order for me to keep a job. Where do you find that? Where do you, you can find it that? on YouTube. Just type in 10 <laughs> yeah. minute power hour and you'll find some ridiculous bullshit that I did. Uh, yeah. That I, I basically tortured two grown men in a room. One time I electrocuted them. They got really mad at me. Hey, that's how they made God's evil dead, work. you know, and it's a classic. Yeah. Torture those men, Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down with the patriarchy. Torture the, that cast specifically for every sin man has committed. For every sin. Yeah, they it's up take to it. you. There are double Jesuses. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Um, I think first and mm-hmm. foremost, we just got to drop this bomb. Vanessa had never seen The Fifth Element. And that surprised us. You, it's totally your jurisdiction or like your purview. I would have thought you had. Yeah. So that's why we were like, yeah, I tell us about great. that. Had you had interest in it? Did what did you think about it when it came and swept through culture and then went away? And what were your initial thoughts upon seeing it finally? Yeah, uh, it took me a really long time to finally see this. It was something that I'd had interest in seeing for a while. Initially, I didn't have any interest in seeing it because it first uh, came onto my radar about 10 years ago when uh, I was in a relationship with someone really annoying and they quoted it constantly. And I but I'm now through this. I'm right. Realizing that they quoted it incorrectly. (laughs) They would like, their cadences were wrong like the entire time. So I was like, wow, this movie must suck. Um, and then oh, every really? single person, like he, like they couldn't <laughs> just, land the lines. They, they couldn't land it. the lines. They Oof. just wouldn't sell it. Ugh. Like now Damn. that I watched the movie, I'm like, wow, they really sucked at like, like re- being referential know, like to this Corbin, movie. Corbin Dallas multi pass. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not. Give good. me the money. You have <laughs> no the money. idea how hard you're actually nailing it right now. <laughs> Corbin Dallas multi pass. <laughs> like they said everything with like the making copies annotation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. You're like this seems not good. Yeah. And I was like, this seems not good. And sure. then every person in my life was like, it's actually great. And there's a couple of movies where they were so hyped for me that I just hadn't gone around to seeing them because I was afraid that they wouldn't like live up to it. And so mm. Fifth Element was one of those. And I'd had an inkling to see it. I just it I my like Rolodex of movies that I need to watch is so long that I just had never gotten around to it. So being given it as a task was very helpful. And I immediately was like, wow, I'm a, such a dumb idiot for many reasons, because this cast is full of people that are so far up my alley and this movie is so far up my alley. But I didn't know that the costumes were designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier and I'm such Hell a like yeah. fashion whore that I was like, this would have made me watch it so much sooner. This is the carrot on the stick that I needed. Yeah, just so people know, uh, he did the costumes for the movie Fifth Element. He's like a high fashion designer. He also does Eurovisions uh, and this movie. Like, I think this movie is on his mantle of shit that he got so incredibly right. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. just utterly nailed it. Everyone looks so fucking cool. And it also kind of predicted <laughs> a lot of like, because like Lilu's entire silhouette, I could see on like any girl in Silver Lake today. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like Ghost in the Shell, the Scarlett Johansson one. I do think there's imagery here that we've 
used since. I won't claim it's like seminal for the whole genre, but it's an important movie to me for sure. Um, to the point that I put the line Aziz light in our screenplay that we're trying to shoot. And then it made me <laughs> take it out. Cause he's like, of all the fifth element things, people aren't going to remember Aziz light, yeah. which is true. And I'm still right about this, but I will say that me and my like cinematography partner coming up, like where we would, you know, you go through class and you light things together. We would scream at each other, Aziz light. Oh, when really? We needed each other. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, it's not that I don't love that. It's yeah. just don't put it in the movie is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, you're not done, Vanessa, because I think often with movies like that, it it is disappointing. <laughs> like, probably yeah. more than half the time, you're right on the money. Um, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But this movie delivers, as people who have seen it know, if you're completely unaware somehow, it's a sci-fi epic with Mila Jovovich, Gary Oldman, Bruce Willis, Chris Tucker, and Luke Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Perry's there, Ian Holm's there. Yeah, Ian Holm. Ian Holm is there. Tiny um, Lister's there. And it's the cinematographer is the most fun name in Hollywood to say, Thierry Arbogast. <laughs> Yeah, Thierry Thierry Arbogast. Arbogast. Uh, and my... then I'm sorry to report that the director is Luke Besson, who has been canceled because he likes him young. Uh, yeah, he also the made The Professional singer. and Lolita, so it shouldn't Jeez. been that big of a surprise to us. The uh, opera singer in this was my one, who he got pregnant when she was 16 and he was 33. Um, oh, is she's the alien opera singer? Yeah, that was his wife wow. that he left for Mila that he met on this set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which Good I found stuff. out my roommate for a large portion of her life thought the alien opera singer was John Leguizamo. Secretly? Oh. I have one like that, which is, now, you know what? It's neither here nor there. I can't talk about Freaked all the time. Let's get back to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, but, oh, I did want to pinpoint... So Luke Perry is in the opening scene, which takes place in ancient Egypt. I forget mm -hmm. if he dies or not, but I love that, like, that's it for Luke Perry. <laughs> he's out of the movie. It's just weird that he's in there for, like, four minutes. Um, and also, man, aside from the costumes, I do want to talk about just the production design because, of course, 1997, CG, definitely used. I think Abyss is already out or whatever, T2 for sure. But... uh there's still a lot more practical work being done. And I love the fabrication in this movie. It's so cool for a one-off sci-fi world, given that it's not built out. Like this is not star Wars. This is not, it hasn't had a whole franchise to accumulate. You know, it's like going to a house and being like, this feels lived in. Uh, yes. I do think they do a great job of confidently presenting a future where you're like, yeah, this all stitches together. This feels like a kind of future world that totally nails its identity. Uh, and I remember when I was a kid thinking like those beetle aliens are so cool, even though mm. why can they travel interstellarly, but they can't walk fast <laughs> enough to avoid being crushed. I love that. Shit, as an adult, dude. I don't know. But as a kid, I was like, those things are so awesome. Look at that puppetry, man. I was like obsessed these little with the design of those things. Yeah. The little fucking penguins, little penguin saviors. <laughs> yeah. Waddling around in exosuits. The Mondo Shawans, I believe, is what they're the called. The Mondo Shawans. Oh, the names in this. Um, mm -hmm. Senator Statert. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's some good ones. There's other yeah. ones. We'll get to it. Lilo Manai. Professor Pacoli. Oh, her full name is Lilo Manai Lekarariba Lamanai Chai Ekbat de Sabat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Lilo Dallas Multipass. Yeah. Um, I forget. Oh, and the con the opera singer's name is Plava Laguna. I forget who the who Gary Oldman, the evil guy. Oh, is he Zorg? Zorg? Yeah, Jean Zorg. Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel. Jean-Baptiste no Emmanuel and Zorg. There's also a big chunk of my young life where I thought Corbin Dallas was the coolest sci-fi name. Like, I was like, that's better than Han Solo. That's better. I just, Boba Fett. I just think Corbin Dallas. It rolls off the tongue and into the heart. It's pretty good. I've, yeah. I've brought up Duncan the Idaho. idea with Jen of naming our son Corbin. It didn't go over. <laughs> little Corb. Little the Corbs. Corby. 
Yeah, and I then know of course a Ruby Padme Ron. that's a child. Really? Oh. See, it's not. It is done these days. I know several. There's. I know a Zelda baby, and it. And they're like, yeah, it's Zelda <laughs> in reference to Zelda. Anyway, once again, back to the movie. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, the other thing I loved as a kid that I still love is that scene with the ogre aliens that are essentially Zorg's henchmen with the arm gun. Man, I used to draw that this that smooth yeah, that gun, rounded gun. The Swiss Army that's knife. That's a Swiss Army guns. knife gun. Yeah, yeah, with the bullets that return to wherever the first tracer bullet hits. Mm-hmm. Oh, good it's stuff. So good. Yeah, Mangalores are the name of the like the dog aliens or what did you call them? Like ogres, like ogres. Lord of the Rings, or, or yeah. orcs, Urukai. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dope, dope. So much world building in this. Yeah. Oh, I want to ask Vanessa, because it's so ra- rare that I can pick the brain of someone who just saw it. How'd you like that ending? Meaning, the fifth element is love. How'd that hit you? Is that like laughable, corny, good? Like good enough? You thought it was fine? What'd you think? I'm still, I'm... Despite a series of disasters, I'm still such a hopeless romantic that when you tell me the secret to something is love, I'm so beyond sold. Oh, good. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I loved her breaking herself by looking up war and being like, what is there? Why is the reason? Uh, and uh, I, I, I love when a genre sneaks in a love story like another one that i hadn't seen before that i just saw for the first time was twister and uh Mm, hell yeah if only people told me that the storm chasing was also a long lost lover story then i would have signed on yeah i would have signed on sooner uh and yeah i wasn't expecting my fifth element sci-fi adventure to also be a love story so i thought i was very charmed by that yeah i like to think of Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton as like two little tornadoes, one could say. <laughs> I mean, it's it ends with them consummating love. their relationship in a tube. It's definitely an F5, an F5 storm that kills so many people. I, I also love, like, I'm, that's the thing is the love is the fifth element. I also love, uh, like, that. What is it? Oh, yeah. Interstellar has the uh, love is the fifth dimension kind of bullshit, yeah. which is funny because Christopher Nolan tries to be like, he's like, he's I'm like hey, look, I'm a human. I understand I'm a robot. love. Yeah. He's like, ah, you big softy. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to talk about physics. Fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm news. The, the one thing I will say about the ending is I think it's a bad design in terms of like, you know, like the salvation of Earth and what whatnot. Maybe the destruction of. I mean, the universe. it's no We're more clever sure exactly than Star Wars. It's like get the artifacts together, you win. Right, you right. Know? Because I guess it's not. I don't think it's. There's story reasons in place that make me think that it, it's not because she needs like love is actually the the fifth element. She's the fifth element, but she has to make the choice. But then because she types in war into a computer, (laughs) uh, she decides, you know what? Fuck humanity. So it's Corbin Dallas who saves humanity by convincing her there's something worth living for. So like the pyramid only works if she feels good about it. Like her emotional Yeah, which is a bad design for like a salvation. Also just like. So she's space Jesus. There should be things in place that are like, don't let her type war into the computer. Uh, Because like, there's so many things that could go wrong. Every day I wake up, I'm like, yeah, save humanity. I'll take it or leave it, which is why I'd be terrible. I'd be a terrible fifth element. The computer bums me out every day, so I get it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the only thing that did strike me as corny this time or like really stood out was there's a runner, meaning a three beat joke, you know, spaced half an hour apart in the movies that they end on. I forget that the end of the movie and keep in mind, this is a sci fi thing set in the far future. 
is that Corbin's mom calls to like nag and chew them out. I'm like, what a weird bit that he has a naggy mom that calls. It's like a Neil Simon play in the, you know, 24th century. It's bizarre. Yeah. Does Luke's son not want to talk to his mom? Fuck in a tube and get out of there. That's what I say. That You're saying cut the mom out completely. Yeah. Uh, That's what you're saying. Yeah, well, she's just a Peanuts character voice on the phone going like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. yeah, it's true. And even his demeanor changes like he's suddenly, you know, it's like talking to your mom on the phone sometimes. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this he's movie also does have a problem with re- withheld information. Like you mentioned, like, why couldn't the Mondashawans explain the stones? Is it because that like they all had to flee that fast? Or there are still Mondashawans other than the five that the orcs shoot down. You know what I mean? Or like Lilu wasn't that injured mm-hmm. and then she starts dying of her wounds and she gives them clues to the stones. I guess it's that she just learned English, but I'm like, no, tell them what to do <laughs> explicitly. You clearly know. She's, anyway. Also, your perfect being should be able to learn English quicker. It's just normal sci-fi stuff. It's all, but, I love yeah. this movie, so, to be clear. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like it's pure it, vibes. everyone who worked on this movie got the assignment. Like yes. I, it's I, I have to believe it's not just the script. It's the like you were mentioning the production design, the world. Just embrace the weird. So many people had license just to go for it. And I think that it it's probably Basan's best. You know, like it's just, I think by letting go and letting people go to Nikita. town, clearly every department had so much freedom. And he was just like, yeah, no, you, that that's awesome. <laughs> you know, like I think that that is what makes this movie actually work for everybody. I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. People. Sort of reminds me of Miller, like Mad Max vibes in dedication mm. to oh, yeah, yeah, creating the lived in yeah. world that's already like, I've never seen this before, but it feels like there you could publish an encyclopedia of bullshit about this universe. Like it feels like there is deep lore there, even if you there's know, not, you can cultivate that feeling. You know what was my favorite element of this universe? The third element. Yes. Uh, no, that you can open your window and a fast food guy just shows up and cooks so for you. Yeah, how cool so is dope. the restaurant <laughs> yeah, that comes to you? Like a mailman, but that you can just sit and chat with and be like, what's going on with you while they're cooking you awesome food? That sounds awesome. But also, I don't want them to see like what I'm up to. So it's, I don't know. It scares me True. and invigorates me. Well, it's me. all a double-edged sword because like, it's nice to have a cold fridge, but do you really want a fridge that's so cold that in 12 minutes it turns you into a block of ice? I feel like that would ruin food. That's too cold. It's probably too cold. <laughs> Although I had questions about that because then he's up and around totally fine. So it's like, it wasn't like he was cryogenically frozen. Right. I guess they just have medical solves for getting frozen in a accidentally getting frozen <laughs> in a refrigerator in the future. Yeah. I guess that works oh, for me. You know? One of the world building things I love though, is the guy who has the image of the hallway strapped to his head so that when you look through the peephole, it looks like the hallway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me the cash guy. Yeah. Which yeah. just happens in the first like 10 minutes. That's his uh, save well, the cat or like a look. He's badass. Well, it's, he's badass. Yeah. Did you know that the actor who, uh, is the give me the cash guy that guy who is like what a wild performance right yeah. like <laughs> i love may. when he pulls the gun on him and he's like mm, and he doesn't even he doesn't <laughs> yeah. know what to do with like his fingers it's just yeah. it's uh it's so fantastic that that dude uh matthew kasovitz he directed lane <laughs> which is crazy which is like a 1995 like very famous french film oh, that like don't know dunked it. Yeah, it's like a Your indie classic. And then over what's my funny? Head. <laughs> Same. What, what's fun? Well, it's Lahane, which gave him just gave him the job for Gothica. If you've seen oh, Gothica, okay. I've heard it's a just very funny that down, the guy, no. the, the guy who's in the Fifth Element with that hat, 
directed gothic and against. leopard parachute pants speaking of on point costume design yeah yeah wild shit wild wild stuff i yeah, love that flew over my head like a coin operated flying taxi huh uh-huh. i love when yeah. you can spot a guy that's just a small character in a movie or a film that ends up to, uh, going on to direct something else like that because I was watching yeah. Roar and I didn't know that the guy that directed Speed got scalped on that movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Spike Jones plays a medic, paramedic in the game. Jan de Vaughn gets- Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he had yeah. to get like 23 stitches in his head because he got attacked by a lion. Wow. Everyone Let's got attacked by a lion Roar. on that set. Not a single person yeah. escaped not being attacked by a lion. Was not a smart film to make in the end. <laughs> no, um, the director's it. son was quoted saying, my dad was kind of an asshole when he made us shoot that movie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, sometimes movies are assholes. Uh, you, we should not make them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you need to do it for movies. You heard it here first. We need to keep making movies. That's movies job security, baby. Yeah, speaking of movies, another double-edged sword piece of tech in his apartment, which is so cool. I love the way his apartment is fully designed, but is a microwave that you press a button and then in three seconds it beeps and there's a whole chicken that comes out. See, yeah, that seems back cool. Back to the future too. But the downside is that's all that comes out is like a cartoon looking full roasted chicken. That's all <laughs> okay. it can make. It's I could survive off maker. of a chicken machine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, rotisserie chicken that I don't have to go to the grocery store for. I That's would an take. appliance I would get. Yeah. You know, you, we buy toasters. You know, we just have additional toast. appliances. Right, right, if you right. just had the super fast muffins. chicken make rotisserie maker, <laughs> yeah, dude. I would buy that in a heartbeat. I once bought a quesadilla maker. If that doesn't, wow. I'm addicted to. Um, yeah. Specificity appliances. Yeah. I'm really bad with unitaskers. I don't like unitaskers in my kitchen. Oh yeah, give me give me that toaster. Man, oven. I'm trying to be the host who keeps us on track, but I just have to say because it's minutia that fascinates me. When we were in New Zealand, one of the Airbnbs had a toaster that also had a little compartment you crack an egg into, and the heat oh. of the toaster perfectly oh. cooks the egg I and the those. toast together. I it's want called That's genius. a toast and egg. <laughs> yeah, toast and egg. Yeah, I've seen those before, and yeah. I'm and I was like, be still, my heart. <laughs> you know what I've Hell seen yeah. before? The Fifth Element. Uh, I mm-hmm. also wanted to, at some point, before I forget, compare it to Valerian and City of a Thousand Planets. Did you see that, Ness? Yeah, that one is one that my roommate has tried to get me. To watch before uh i don't know why it doesn't appeal to me at all it's not very good. well famously it's unappealing and i just wanted to ask then i'll ask abe because i kind of don't like why do i like the fifth element and hate valerian so much um i have a lot of thoughts on that i think there's just wonderful maneuvers in this valerian <laughs> plays it pretty straight this movie will just be like, let's do a five minute opera. And everyone's like, wow, this is great. Uh, and I mean, that's all that's really happening in the story. I guess it's, well, that's not all. There's stuff that's happening during There's it, a like shootout the happening in the hotel room. Well, they're yeah. setting up for the shootout, which is also a lot, like, that's a really good editorial technique. Uh, more movies need to do this. But it's, it's the just Godfather. Like, exactly. Um, but, like, there's also just sci- fantastic sci fi world building. For the sake of world building, like the parasites in the landing gear, briefly getting to know the crew, like those are moments where you're like, it really humanizes this foreign alien and super cool world. They showed us a dirty job in that world. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, You go to Valerian and it's like very cold and follow these two protagonists as they navigate like it's like the Matrix, you know, it's very cold. Uh, the Matrix works for other reasons, but like, yeah, this this movie feels more like Star Wars because of shit like that. And I feel yeah. like, um, I'm sorry, Cara Delevingne, but uh, everyone in Fifth Element is actually a good actor. They're going for something for it's- sure. 
wild and to realize that there. Gary Oldman is also Commissioner Gordon. Ugh. That Zorg is Commissioner Ugh. Gordon. I didn't He's recognize a, him. I this has to be He's like so good. I suspect if you sat Gary Oldman down and were like in his storied career of roles, like what was just the most fun? He'd go like Fifth Element Baby <laughs> has to be on the list in the top of the list for fun. Just He's going uh, his yeah. He has two responses in this movie. Zorg has two responses to the box not having stones in it because <laughs> yeah, it yeah. happens twice to him. Both times are like perhaps the not just the funniest thing in mo- like this movie, but one of the best character performances for a joke in most like action adventure movies I've ever seen. Just so fucking funny. The second time he just starts crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good yeah gary Ullman's a treasure yeah i also and, love how mm-hmm. evil his <laughs> his character is like they do the reverse of save the cat what is that burn the cat i don't know what the lingo is but they come to him with a problem where it's like we have to fire like a half a million people um yeah. unfortunately because of movements <laughs> in the sector i was thinking one of the smaller cab companies and he's like fire one million <laughs> yeah. and Just you're like how no does that reason. even benefit you <laughs> and you're uh, like uh, from, okay well from which company or department just fire people i don't fire care people. <laughs> yeah um that's why yeah it's i mean the dialogue is broad. <laughs> like I like, um, it's almost like a Roland Emmerich movie where there's Ian Holm is the character coming in and, and like Mr. President, there's a looming disaster. It just happens to be sci-fi in this case. And he's like, there's a ball that the spaceships have detected out in space moving towards earth. Right? Yeah, there is. It's pure evil. And the president says, <laughs> father, your theory is very interesting. I'm like, is it? All he said was the ball is evil. That's not anything. <laughs> Just little moments like that. <laughs> what if it was a monster? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very interesting, professor. It really reminded like how much this shares with never ending story. Right. Like when you think about never ending story, yeah, it's just like there vibes. is a nothing coming to yeah. I don't know, destroy everything. Yeah. There's a princess involved, a rogue type who helps her do it. I don't know. I just yeah. noticed that this time. And she gets like, to be naked cuz of cuz they're thermal bandages, guys. Yes. Like they're your brain's thermal in the bandages. Gutter. They're keeping it's, her It's warm. not horny. <laughs> yeah. It's sci-fi. Uh I will say definitely an early movie crush or obsession. Let's see. I would have been 12. Yeah. I remember being like, she is perfect. That's the hottest woman I've That's ever seen perfect. in my life. Yeah. She's really good in this. Yeah. It's, and she I does think a hard job role. with the, um, with the fake language stuff. That's really tough. Yeah. Really the enjoyed her figuring things out. And also trying to look brand new. Like, yeah, she approaches everything. With this like innocence and curiosity that's like, oh, you were born yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the person who fell from the sky vibe is good. Yeah. And she's typically in films just the stoic and just badass character, which is necessary for a lot of the types of movies that she's done in her career. But this is the most nuanced to me. I don't know. She's probably done art films that I'm totally oblivious of, but. I think it's her best role. Death to Smoochie. No, she wasn't in that. Let's finally, <laughs> let's, if since we're doing character roundup, let's talk Chris Tucker, who we haven't hit that much. Ruby Rod. Oh, yes. I think another oh, interesting structural aside, right? Like right before the opera, we also just get to know this wacky character who is not key to the plot unfolding and doesn't do fights and is just like along for the ride, but only a third of the ride. Very interesting. Uh, I want to, well, let's go to Ness. Cause you, did you know Ruby Rod from like culture from pop culture yet? Or was he completely new? I'd seen costumes before. Ah. Uh, I'd seen people do the costumes and I'm like sick. So he's like a sassy, Riddler. Vaguely, <laughs> Riddler, space alien. Uh, he's something. Uh, and then I got an inkling of it hearing him talk in the background of the television at the beginning of the movie. And I was like, oh, okay, we're getting Chris Tucker in this. 
Uh, and then he showed up and within two minutes stole the movie. Right, um, absolutely. Sorry, Lilu and Corbin, you did a great job. You're both amazing. Fuck I up. love you, whatever. Fuck off. Uh, Ruby Rod is the only thing that matters right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the insane energy that he's bringing to the table and the fact that it like after his insane performance immediately cuts to him eating out a space stewardess <laughs> um <laughs> but also firing like, the Shut engines. Up, i'm doing this yeah i'm working i ref i still can't turn off i'm still a host of a tv show while we're doing this i can't not fuck it's just supreme uh prince energy you know oh yeah it's just true prince i'm so sad we don't have an actual Ruby Rod, just because like <laughs> we've never had a prince who is also just running around doing talk doing shows that like on talk. Well, Baron I mean, just or as flamboyant, you know, Eric Andre shit. Um, I yeah. also love. Yeah. Uh, at the end, when they win, they kill the orb. One of them yells, yes. And Ruby goes, ah, what's the matter with you screaming every five minutes? It's a bomb or something. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just exits the movie. Yeah, I think so that's good. his last moment in the movie. <laughs> he it is his last moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He narrates to his audience and crawls around. It does really spice up that big shootout on the spaceship. Like, oh, he has you know, the best. It adds line. a comedic it, layer, yeah, to the on whole the sequence. cruise liner. He has the best line in that se sequence when he accident like he gets because there's a running bit where like loud noises surprises him which yeah. is great uh and he accidentally shoots the dog alien that he has the gun on and he's like you think he's gonna be okay uh it's yeah. just a great line uh, uh the only thing that bothered me sorry i write down my little crack style nitpicks was that he sings all night long i guess it didn't bother me i'll positively reframe that it's cool how he sings all night long because <laughs> now I know that that song survives for 300 years. <laughs> like, it's still yeah, that is pretty cool. All you know? night long. I do like that song. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What a gift. What you a know gift. what's interesting to see what also survived like two, 300 years? Mm -hmm. um, the New York accent. <laughs> yeah. Still intact. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. I'm walking here ass energy. Yeah. I mean, frankly, I, I'm I'll be the one who says it. No notes on the Brooklyn accent. Uh, it's one of those accents that should be for. What about there still being cabs even when there's flying cars? Like no self driving, no Uber or Lyft. It's yellow cabs. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm into it. I'm also into the idea that we become vertically. You know, like our roads are now vertical in space. Well, that's always the... my thing about flying cars is why, I mean, it only works if they're self-driving. Like, how do you, why are they in specific, they're at specific, like, altitudes in sheets? Do you know what I mean? There's, like, yeah, invisible yeah. roads What's the through the air. Yeah, I always, I one thing I always crave what a weird thing to crave, but as a sci-fi fan, someone lays it out is for them to have an explanation of why, how the flying cars don't hit each other or what the system is. <laughs> is there air traffic control? Or if they say they all fly themselves with sophisticated computers. Okay. Now we're talking, but he there was but these a, have human drivers. There's a, wh which one at four or five, five, there was a mission impossible that had a parking lot. <laughs> and as soon as the movie, because I was kind of bored by the movie, but as soon as the movie like said, okay, so these cars uh, go vertically and go like into the ground like a silo, and I'm like, okay, I have so many questions. Like, is yeah. it like a vending machine? <laughs> like, please answer them, movie. And then they cut away, and I'm like, no, 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 go back, go back to the yeah, <laughs> to explain the, cars. the shape, the geometry of what just happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Speaking of space, explaining the spaces, I thought it was wild that the hotels it's so it's the equivalent of a fancy cruise ship and it's Hawaii themed. I'm like, fuck Hawaii. We're in space. Make it space themed. We're so much further than Hawaii. Like show me some nebulae and shit, you yeah, know? Fuck Hawaii. Yeah. No, I disagree because if you're in space all the time, that's normal for you. You Hawaii think they take like, space for granted? It seems like a big deal that he gets to go there. I just feel space, Hawaii is super rare relative to space and probably most planets, which are rocks. I don't know. You've been to Indonesia? 
there's parts where you could I be like, not. this is similar. This is Hawaii-ish. Yeah, I'm over this. I've been <laughs> and I'm over it. I'm over and this. I'm over it. Abel well, Tasman you're right about in New that. Zealand, very maybe you're right. Hawaiian. I I will yield this point. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's you got two any, out uh, of three, so you're skin in this game, Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been in parts of Florida where I'm like, this could be Hawaii. Yeah. And Florida sucks. There you go. Yeah. There you go, Abe. All right. I win. Right. I get, yeah. Let's see. Another fuck, one. Fuck away. Uh, another movie it really reminded me of in terms of the way it made me feel was Men in Black. I thought it was that exact shade of fun. It's that yeah. exact uh, shade of fun. I say that in a good way. No, I know exactly That's what you mean because Men in Black is the kind of movie where it could really only be written around the time that it was written because if you wrote it now, a studio would have begged you to have like a million explanations for the Men in Black <laughs> themselves and like a brief history of the organization and, and a backstory lore. and then some yeah. lore for, uh, you know, um, Rip for the, Torn's the character. For the to gobble um, up. Exactly. And... Y- instead of getting a 90 minute script, you get a franchise of three movies. Uh, and it's similarly, this movie doesn't care to explain a lot to you because it just wants you to believe what's happening so that it can tell the story it wants to tell. Yeah, that's true. There's all truth in that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, I, okay. Another one. I want to know how Vanessa felt. In the moment, if you can cast your mind back to the moment when the diva goes from opera to suddenly pointing at her hips and doing techno opera. Huh? Uh, I very much vibed with it. I was like, yeah. OK, this is this is future opera that we're rolling with. They created a really interesting sound to mix old and new. Um, I did laugh a little bit yeah um, i thought so <laughs> i did the chris pratt parks and rec gif where you look at camera and smile <laughs> yeah. i no, love it's that fu- it knows what it is it knows what yeah. it is it's they're it- like how what i just love because star trek famously doesn't project what pop culture will be because they don't want to make that call i love yeah. that they're like we will it's fucking snakehead blue lady <laughs> Techno yeah. opera, bitch. <laughs> She's got stones in her chest. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, and Let's go. Chris, yeah. Chris Tucker hosts it completely he, like at odds with her vibe. He just tramples all over the opera feel. It's like having <laughs> Howard Stern host the Oscars. Or, I guess they do have comedians host. Whatever. You get the analogy I was groping for. Yeah. Yeah. But he like most of our Oscar like hosts aren't just like making women come all the time just by being there, you know, like that doesn't seem to happen with back in the day, Billy Crystal. I was about to say <laughs> Billy Crystal. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm wrong about this. Apparently Billy Crystal. And it's just two, a, everyone it's come. two to one against Abe this time yet again. I hey think man, Billy, I Billy yield Crystal this highly point fuckable. Once again. Yeah. <laughs> you got to yield. Have you seen um, the way you wore that day. sweater and when Harry met Sally? It's true. That is also a horny movie. I love in this movie, there's one shot that is the horniest that um, Bruce Willis has ever been. And you know the one I'm talking about. It's the one that... Oh. <laughs> When he's talking when to he, Finger and he lays back uh-huh. and gropes his torso. We, yep, and he goes, five nine, blue eyes, long legs, <laughs> yeah. great skin. Dude. And it's just like jerking off. Do you remember that we did a, so Cracked had a series <laughs> yeah. called Cut Ups where we tried to do sketches that are That's just right. re-edited footage. And based on that moment, we extrapolated just this funny video where he's doing phone sex with some weirdo. And... uh it's one of the very few videos on crack that is completely wiped from the face of, I believe, existence. Like, I don't think the file, you know what I mean? And yeah, people yeah, yeah. to this day ask, like, what happened to that fuckable Bruce Willis sketch where he's really bangable? Because <laughs> he's talking to a guy named Finger. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Did I uh, it's, dream Big yeah. Feats Man? No, Big no, Feet's Big Man Feet's is still Man online. You can find that. Sketch. That's one of my that favorites. We, Fully improvised. Really good for improv. 
Yeah. That's a deep I'm Dracula in that. I liked that one. I remember uh, you were Dracula because yeah. we talked about yeah. how you like playing Draculas. I do. I've played Dracula four or five times. <laughs> I also bit. have a spec script for a 45 minute short where I would play Dracula and I really want to do it. But then that the show came along and it's like, why do it anymore? Yeah, yeah. why do it anymore? Especially with, yeah. We were going to do a sad uh, Dracula mockumentary, yeah. I feel I like, yeah, because that one also is sad Dracula. We always like the Ours sad Dracula. Ours predated the shadows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Big Feet's Man has it because you're just like, we're all in a room hanging out, and he's like, so you guys like hanging out? Or, and then you get hung up on, I yeah, think. Yeah, they hang they, My phone so is So we just do this thing. Yeah. Yeah, your phone is a <laughs> Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Lilu at the end says everything humans create is used to destroy. Ever seen mm. Legos, bitch? That's all I wrote that joke wow. down in my notes. <laughs> That's true, though. She probably <laughs> hasn't seen Legos. Do you think he could have saved the mm. world if instead of kissing her, he showed her Legos? Yeah. Oh, that's such a good or, Lego Or it movie. was like, wait, you already went through the dictionary. At this time, you've seen art, love, soul. You know, like nothing. <laughs> There's nothing in there that was like good. You've seen all what, of Friends at this point, you know? What if she just typed Gothica into They were on a break. <laughs> that was funny. I thought that was funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, also about the opera, I fucking love that at the end, Corbin stands in a daze and applauds. So you're like, oh, the opera really touched <laughs> Corbin Dallas. Yeah, no, that, like, that's that. what an unnecessary <laughs> detail that he was like, wow. That was really good. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that because he's he's never probably seen an opera before. Oh no! What does he yeah. have to do with opera? He's a Brooklyn Nothing. cab driver. He would never. Yeah. He's just walking here. So the only and also yeah. Go yeah. ahead. You you go. No 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 no. I was done. I was done. I was done. I oh, all I was going to say is the only thing that didn't hold up and like blow me away in the modern context or like looking through the because, of course, having seen it many times growing up, I'm now looking part of me is like, how much is nostalgia? And that's just an interesting math to do. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I would say the only thing that didn't hold up and it might be because there's John Wicks and shit now we've really upped the game. But like the stunts and choreo. Was like what? There's really a '90s. She kicks a sword in half at one point, and I was like, "This is some Hercules Xena shit." The fights yeah, are whatever. Yeah. The fights are fine. I didn't really. Yeah. <laughs> the fights didn't really do it for me. I I watch a lot of good fights all the time. One well, Bruce uh, Willis is often associated oh, oh, oh. with good fights. I only I only dabble in the finest of fights. Oh, oh yeah, well you had kicking and screaming that really focused on fight driven stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there is a r- rich tapestry of fight movies to be found in direct to video releases over the last like 10 years uh, mm-hmm. that are just crazy, like baby assassins and um, Hydra uh, and uh, a lot of Scott Adkins movies. So like direct to video, there's a lot of good shit coming out right now. Um, and watching the fight season this i was just like okay this feels like early in mila jojovich's career to where maybe she was just starting to learn how to take choreo um so it it didn't really land for me yeah <clears throat> yeah the I mean, shootouts all right i mean the sen- the centerpiece shootout on the ship in act three is all right but it's more yeah, like, had, like it's interesting it was more a spectacle of world building and the love story, like Vanessa was saying, to me, then it was the action part of the action sequences. Does that make sense? Or um, it reminded me of Total Recall, <laughs> where the action is what, when you look back, you're like, I actually was legitimately into the story in that more than seeing someone do good, great. Although, when you can do both, it's like, I just I think mean, that's the, that's we've, the best, we've really but... done some excellent action lately. That's hard to live. Oh up yeah, to. I mean, we kind of solved this a while ago, and especially with how much money we spend on movies now, or movies of this type, I should say. Just saw Fall Guy. Uh, uh, a lot of people are oh yes, know, pointing Guy, out insane. that it's flopping, but it's underrated. The stunts are nuts. We're really good yeah. at stunts now. I, that movie actually is not 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 too bad. Yeah, all no, it's around. delightful. 
it's a delightful little mix but yeah like the fight stuff you 90s like that this is baby steps you know like that's what i think of like the action movie like even though some of the most classic best you know die hard shit like jackie chan was active during this time and but he's just like a freak talent that you don't like, I don't know that we have a follow-up. Remember when they were trying to get other guys like that? They're like, Ong Bak, you can do that kind of shit. Let's yeah, try you Who out. else we got? Yeah. Who else we got? Yeah, well, in a way, Asian cinema did that, right? Like, yeah. a- as soon as Western, at least in terms of, like, Hollywood's influence or, like, getting influenced, like, the second that Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out a- and wire work became, like, a reality for a lot of filmmakers, it just made the game, like, well, okay. <laughs> like, well, yeah. we should just do that most of the time. And then on top of everything Matrix else. Matrix helps. Yeah. Matrix help, obviously, with the gunplay and stuff like that. But, like, John Wick, you know, we're in a... Like, we're that at shit, a different level now. Like, the last 10 years has been a renaissance in terms of, like, just the... Even low budget ones, like you ever seen that upgrade? Upgrade rules, yeah. Upgrade's great. Yeah. Great one off sci fi exactly. that I bring up a lot to friends because <laughs> people haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, the action stuff is always hard to compare to this stuff. But I don't know, the explosions look almost better. There's a lot of practical good stuff still in this. Yeah. The bomb, it was weird. I thought the time bomb looked surprisingly cheap. It's just like a prop misstep. I don't, I mean, since we're just talking <clears throat> department by department, but right, mostly yeah. pretty good. What was the, there was one where something was locked up with, yeah, Zorg cancels the time bomb, but the dying ogre deploys their own bomb, you know? And yeah, that's, he has a that's Zorg's ultimately undoing. I just thought, <laughs> this is so nitpicky, but you know, got to fill time. <laughs> no, this is what people come to us for. His, his bomb you can't tamper with because it's locked with a combination lock, like one you would get for a high school locker. And I was like, get some sci-fi lock in there. What are we doing? A seam. I see a seam. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you also at least noticed that. (laughs) It's like the Game of Thrones coffee cup where you're like, there's no way that, I mean, that just screams present tense. Uh, Also, maybe they don't have them in France. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks fresh in France. I also wanted to ask a question that's bothered me since I was little. How the fuck was the diva expecting to give them the stones after the show? Like, let's say nothing went sideways and they met up. Was she going to cut her belly open? Like, no, she's going to pass them. She was going to shit them out, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be the only piece of <laughs> All light? four of so them. So can you imagine shitting out four prism-shaped stones? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like 20 pounds each. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're each. Yeah, this is that's cool. It's That's pretty cool. cool. Um, there's a <laughs> rainbow baby elephant animatronic in this movie. I thought that was very impressive, especially oh, that thing is to so use cute. for such and a it, short moment. It's like Hitler's dog. He was trying to. He just sucks as an organism. That's my read. He has a button read. on his desk that summons a genetically mutated <laughs> baby read. elephant. Who he creature. loves. <laughs> Who he like, loves. Later, yeah. he's like... He's hugging like it's like his cat. It's like his. It's like how Doctor little... Claus strokes a cat. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. It's and it loves him, and it's got eyes that are like very human, and that like is very off-putting as a pet yeah. to have. Like, oh hey, Brett, <laughs> or something like you right. feel like it should have a name of like a friend, but it's just a fucking cat. Yeah, I something I noticed this time that I never noticed before is that. They briefly shimmy in that he was part of an elite special forces unit and is an expert pilot and fighter. Unnecessary. Which I was like, you did not need that. It's fine that he's a cab driver. Although there is a single shot like in the final battle where at the beginning he kind of comes out and he like takes out like eight fools in a single gesture that I was like. I'm glad they put that line in because otherwise I would not believe that some taxi cab driver would be able to uh, just assassinate eight people in, in within like 1.2 oh, seconds. Well, that seems impossible to believe anyway. When he goes four on the right. left, three on the right, now three on the left, two on the right, right. now they're all dead. Yeah. I mean, That's he just straight up much. badasses them into backing down. Anybody else want right. to negotiate? Yeah. And I kind of felt like it. the best... 
better version of the movie to me is that that isn't there. Like he's not the most badass. He just, you know, finds his way out. Maybe yeah. that's just me. Fo- yeah, I think I just am in love with Die Hard, and that's the only. Well, that's what's happening. And it's here. Bruce Willis's thing. I don't know. I feel like it is. Yeah, it is. Schwarzenegger's so is the brain. guy you put in high concept. Like if it's a pregnant <laughs> guy or a kindergarten cop, you it's know, true, Willis. But he's was also for the, the most ones. badass. Yeah, but I, I mean, I guess generation. this isn't grounded in the sense that it's wacky sci-fi. But his character yeah. feels more. Now. I don't think the problem is that it's not believable for me. In this movie, I'm believing everything you're throwing at me. Okay. It's because it's so, like, it's sweaty. It's like, uh, we're trying hard, r- really hard for you to believe how badass this guy is. Everywhere else, the movie is like, I don't care. Like, I don't, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, whatever yeah. you want. This is, it's kind of got this cool factor out of that. And so it's the one moment where I'm like, that could be adjusted, I guess. Okay. I want to m- make a statement. Which is your brother, your bro, Thierry Arbogast. Mm-hmm. He is not afraid of hard light. I love this movie and how it looks. Controversial statement, dude. <laughs> hard light, baby. Let the shadows have hard lines. We, it's a forgotten art at this point, and it, I just think that one of the one of the reasons that this movie looks classic. A lot of the classic movies, you know, in terms of like you know our beloved Star Wars and whatnot. Things feel theatrical, and that's there's something that feels right about that. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but and it reminds me of the past. But like, I was just so happy. To I think see, it's because like, you just recently covered Lincoln on a different podcast. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I love Deacons and everything, and I love the Coen Brothers. Um, but like, there was an era where it was just like Hard Light was out of almost necessity. Like, we didn't, we didn't go. Oh, Soft Light is everything. You know now. Now you have like your Blade Runners and whatnot, which is just like there's not a hard light in the whole thing. And I'm just like, I kind of starved for this old era where we just like, yeah, kind of looks like a stage a little bit. You know, it's kind of subconsciously there. Yeah. Makes you feel good. Although that time you referenced Star Wars made me realize the only part I would change, which I think is I never like it. And it always strikes me as like, Really? Humanity has not outgrown this story or we can't think of something more nuanced. Um, is that the villain is <laughs> like, what's the line? He says, uh, if evil stands there, light will turn to dark forever. And they're like, that's all you need to know about the stakes. I don't know. It always feels like a cop out to me that it's like, that is just an evil ball. We can't <laughs> yeah, let it's... the evil ball win. <laughs> Where does mm-hmm. it come from? Like, you know, invent some lore for that, that it makes me feel like it is something. Star Wars has the same problem, though. Yeah, when it dies, it's just, it made me ask the question, is that where our first moon is from? Oh, is another dead ancient space god? Because it looks, it looks just like the moon. Yeah, that's right? cool. Yeah. Also, it's 62 Dude, meters from Earth. They should revive this shit, do a prequel called The First Element. About the first time this happened, that'd be good. That'd be good. Well, it says the snake comes every 5,000 years, so I guess it would have to be like, this is the next time it's come since the Beatle guys got crushed in the pyramid. Right, which would have been 5,000 years ago in like, when does this take place? 20 or like i mean 23 it's, it something. says it's like 3000 bc which for the record i looked it up yeah there is there was recorded written history at that point i'm like wouldn't this be because a giant spaceship comes down but anyway another nitpick <laughs> i just like the idea that fifth element is low-key trying to do creationism on us and say like yeah the moon didn't exist mm-hmm. until like tw- 2000 years bc no, right baby. yeah yeah <laughs> They were dinosaurs. Yep, <laughs> that's right. Now that now you got a movie. They don't going, show it in baby. the movie, but yeah. Yet it still ends with people fucking in tubes. Uh, well, as a kid, actually, actual sex scenes made me weird, very uncomfortable, like extremely uncomfortable. So I remember I hated the ending. I was like, "Did we need? Did we need the sex? Really? Did we? <laughs> this was peak uh, that no, time for me. I wrote a Did- complaint letter to." whoever owns the James Bond franchise when I was like 12. No. Be, like being like, his wife dies at the beginning. By the end, he's having sex with another different woman. 
no. this is like such an evil like you guys gotta yeah like uh you know nagging your i never your, knew this about you that's fantastic your thing is reprehensible i won't be watching it anymore letter which by the way my People would be like, oh, so your parents were strict? Mm. No, my parents were like, don't write that letter. That's embarrassing as shit. And I was like, I really stand behind it. This movie is immoral. Fucking Little Lord. Little Lord Fauntleroy. Little Victorian swim. My dad brought home the Offspring album Americana and played it in the house. And I ran out crying like, punk is evil. (laughs) So the kids weren't all right. Yeah. Keep them separated. Um, that's smash dude get your offspring shit no I I, I wasn't trying to do look I, now I know Americana by heart I, I, I'm pretty fly for a white guy let's stop the episode now <laughs> you don't want to talk about offspring for another hour um, yeah I think that that's probably pay fair. the man that's the deep cut off that album that's the deep cut good job good podcasting We all are patting each other on the back, now braiding each other's hair in a circle, and we're done.